Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So today we are back out here in our workshop and we're going to continue on trying to cover our walls up. You can see we've already got them insulated. They're spray foam insulated. And what we're trying to do is we just want to get this all covered up uh, and we're going to do it with this, this plywood like this. We're, we've stained this plywood a dark color. This is the, uh, it's kind of like the barn siding plywood. And I think it's going to look really good in here once we get done. But the first thing we need to do is we're going to put across horizontal nailers or purlins or whatever you want to call them. We're going to put those across there so that we have something to nail our plywood to and our metal to that's going along the bottom. And in this corner right here, this post wasn't sticking out enough to attach to. So we had to add a two by four on here. It's kind of a pain because we had to scrape all that uh, insulation away to get it to fit in there. Plus we've got the bolts that are in here from the post and the wires coming through. It was just kind of a pain to get that board in there. So now that it's there, we can start running these horizontal nailers. So we're using treated two by fours as our bottom nailer and that's because it's in contact with the concrete and it's also in contact with this perma column. Um, these perma columns have a concrete bottom. We put these in on this pole barn because that way there's no wood in the ground to rot, but then you got to kind of deal with that. So we gotta, we're going to have to use a concrete anchor to attach the boards to it. So there is rebar inside of this, so we got to try our best not to hit it. So hopefully we'll drill in the right place the first time. So I'm shooting for the center. My face turning red. I definitely feel like it. It's like the worst part of it right here. So these are the Tapcons. They're a concrete anchor, but it's more like a screw. Pretty handy to use. So we'll just start putting our nailers up the wall here every two feet. At least the center of the board is every two feet. Uh, I don't drop it. You good where you are? Yep. So the nailer at the four foot level, we used a two by six because it is where the plywood meets the, you know, the corrugated metal here. So it just gives us a little bit wider surface to nail both of those. But that also ends up being the same height as this window. So we're doing this wall a little bit different than we did the others. The other ones, we actually put the nailers in between all of these uh, posts, very time consuming. So we decided to put these on the surface this time. So it is a little different. So we're going to notch this out for the window. So we're just going to mark it so it's where the window is. See if we can cut this out.
right, we got all the nailers mounted to the wall. Now this is the first wall that we've tried to surface mount these and nail these to the post. So it's made our wall an inch and a half thicker than what we were doing before. So on previous walls, we actually mounted it so it was flush. So we mounted it in between the posts so it was flush with the posts as well. And that's how we were doing these. It was very time consuming, cutting everything to the right length. And when you're messing with these perma columns, a lot of times you ended up on the steel and you'd have to drill through the steel to be able to mount these. So it was very time consuming, especially when you had to interact with any of the perma column and the bracket. So this way was faster, but the problem is being an inch and a half thicker, I didn't realize until we got to the ceiling is we actually had to add a board at the very top and it spaced us out. So now we're actually covering an inch and a half of the ceiling. So we're just slightly covering up the ceiling with this wall now. And that is not what I intended to do. I didn't even notice it until we got to the very last. So I am not gonna tear all this out and redo it. This was a lot quicker. It's just, I guess since I didn't anticipate this, that the ceiling was made, the ceiling was built already and it was made for this to be flush. And I guess I didn't realize that until we got to the top that we're gonna cover the ceiling up just a little bit. So here's a closer look. This is flush with the post. So we had to put a two by four on here to make it the same uh, plane on the same plane as these. So you can see it's covering up the ceiling a little bit. As in this wall over here, you can see, you see the J channel stick out. So we still have this plywood to put on here. So it's not gonna quite look the same. This is not the way I intended it to go. Aesthetically, I don't think this is that bad. This only took us a couple hours to get this entire wall done. And if we would have done it the other way between the posts, it would have taken us all day. So I think Rebecca's right. Aesthetically, you're not gonna probably even notice um, that the plywood is covering, you know, that we're slightly covering the ceiling. Um, you probably, the only way you're gonna know is by watching this video. Yeah, and what the wife says goes. <laughs> so now that we got the, the nailers finished all the way up the wall, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start moving the outlets. We gotta move them to space them out for these purlins, and plus we're gonna move them around a little bit so they make more sense for how this space is gonna end up being in the future. All right, I've got the windows all framed out now and um, they're spaced out exactly the same as everything else. So it'll be ready to put the plywood on there. So the last thing we gotta do is we actually gotta get some insulation and we gotta shove it in the very top of the wall and seal it up, seal the wall up between the ceiling. That way when we put our blown in insulation in, all that blown in insulation just doesn't fall down this wall. So we're just gonna use some scrap pieces of insulation and just start filling in all the voids up there. All right, I think we're all done now with the wall. I think we got it framed out the way we want. We've got our outlets where we want them. I think it's ready for plywood. So we're gonna do this exact same thing. This is a basically a barn siding and uh, we've got some old corrugated metal. We're gonna try to do the same thing down this wall. So uh, let me go ahead and just explain to you what I envisioned for this space. So explain why I put the outlets the way I did. So 
I picture bringing in lumber through this garage door right here, this opening. Bring in lumber in here and then I could set full sheets of like plywood or anything. I could lean them against the wall here. So if you lean them up here, they would come to about this high. So I wanted these outlets to be higher than that in case I had a bunch of plywood stacked here. And uh, above here, I thought about putting shelves so that I could store lumber up the wall. So this is more of a, in this corner would be more of a wood st storage area. So over here between these two windows, I picture making some type of a rolling workbench or assembly table, and it would store right here between these two windows. And above it, I pictured putting some type of a pegboard system, like some type of that metal pegboard, where I could put all my tools and everything on the wall so they're easy to see, easy to access. And that's why I put this outlet lower, so it would be low enough that I could put a bunch of pegboard up here. Plus, the workbench would only end up being about this high, so it'd still be lower than the outlet, so it would fit in between. And then down here, um, I probably from here all the way down, I'd have some type of a workbench with a, with a miter saw right here so that I could cut wood up. So that's what this outlet here is for, is for the miter saw. And if I had a really long board, it could stick out over that rolling workbench and I could, I could fit in here, you know, like a 16 foot board or longer to be able to cut up in the saw. So next weekend we'll come back and we'll try to start putting the plywood on the walls here, start getting them all covered up. And then once that is done, you know, we can start organizing, I hope. At least we can start putting stuff in its final place along this wall. And I just want to get all the walls done so that I can finally start trying to get things organized around here. And uh, just trying to get everything finished and closed up, basically, so that uh, we can heat this space in the wintertime and have a nice place to be able to work this winter. So got to going to try to push over the next few weeks to try to get uh, at least one day every weekend working on the workshop. So sanding this plywood and then staining it is very time consuming. That's what we did, but I think it turned out fantastic. I think it looks great. Um, it's a lot of extra effort, but in the end, it's gonna be here for the rest of my life. So I think it's gonna be worth the extra time putting this on. And uh, that's what we'll be doing next week. If we have enough time, we'll get the corrugated metal on as well. But uh, I think that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Yeah, man sweeping. This is what women want to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I call that bonus points. I'm earning <laughs> bonus points when I do. Well, clean, your... Anytime I clean anything, it's bonus points. It's your garage, so I don't know if I count that. <laughs> no. If I clean in the house, it's yes. definitely bonus points. Yes.